Hey there internet, Keith here and welcome to the Cars of Keith YouTube channel. And it's that time my DI water is now above zero ppm. It's time to change the resin. Well, at the same time, we're going to modify our CR Spotless DIW20. So I picked up this one cubic foot bag of resin from RV Mods along with their modification. They have this for multiple of the CR Spotlesses and also many other ones as well. 235 bucks for this mixed bag of resin, which is really, really good because CR Spotless one's like 360, 370. Maybe it's not as good, we'll find out. Uh, a lot of people have been using this from them and they've had no complaints whatsoever. So I have my DigiFlow meters right here. We have one over here just on the DI line, so I'm gonna measure the exact gallons and gallons per minute coming out of that. We actually hit one PPM at about 490 something gallons. They said it would go about 400 for the PPM that I have. So the theory behind this modification is two things. Inside the 20 inch filter housing is a filter, but it's much smaller than the actual housing. So there's a lot of space that water fills up. What this does is you take the filters out and you basically fill it up completely with just resin. And then this tube goes down the middle. It has little slots down here at the end. This goes up into the main tube and creates the filtering process. So here's the slots. They go all around the tip of this PVC pipe here. Here's the top of the pipe. There's an O-ring right here. So obviously it should last longer because we're going from probably a quarter of a cubic foot, 0.3 of a cubic feet, all the way up to half a cubic foot, maybe a little more. My current setup can handle running a full pressure washer through it. Can these little slots at the bottom maintain the GPM that I need? So before we get any further into the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, check the links below. Let's get right into the video. Let's run a little bit of water here. Let's see what we're at. You see we're right at 2 ppm now. It was 3 earlier, so it kind of fluctuates. So to loosen the filters, it's going to be clockwise. Now these are pretty heavy, especially filled with water. Just get it loose enough to where you can do it by hand. Hey, my cat meowing. There we go. Now I'd already loosen these a little bit beforehand. There we go. So here's the filter. Pretty heavy. As you can see though, all the void that's in here. So you're replacing that void with full resin with this mod. You can see the water going down. You can see the base of this filter has slots on the bottom. The water comes in. Uh, just goes through the resin, uh, works its way through, and it comes out the top right here. Now, if you were not going to do the modification, all you have to do is unscrew the bottom here. And then you just dump this resin out, and then you fill it back up. I forgot to say that there's a little ring in here that has these little push-outs that keeps the filter, you know, straight, especially when you're trying to screw them in up here. Wow. Crazy. My second filter on this side, see the difference in coloration between the top and the bottom? I think this is where the resin started to break down and lose its ability uh, to use the positive and negative ions to attach to you know solids to keep them out. But the other one doesn't have that defined line. As you can see here, we have this hole. Water comes in here, goes down through the filter, and it comes up through this hole and then out and into the next filter. On this mod, these tubes, they actually go into the center section. Now, the old way, the filter would sit and this would kind of seat them together. Wow, you can even see where my seal was not exactly where it was supposed to be. It, it was not lined up correct. I could have had blow by from this first filter. So the next thing you wanna do is make sure this is rinsed out. I've already done that. You see, it's, it's basically just like a brown sugar-like uh, texture. Use a scoop or like I found a Taco Bell cup. We want to fill this up till it reaches about two inches from the top, and then we want to leave that as an open space. Shake it a little bit. We also want to make sure that the O-ring is clear of any resin. You don't want any resin in that channel right there messing with the seal. Now, optionally, you could use Vaseline on these. Just be very careful how much you use, which is why I don't do it. Uh, because if you use too much, the seal can be messed up as well. Uh, you can over torque the tube. You can do all kinds of things when you add a lubricant. Now you take your tube into the dead center and you just kind of move it circular and you got to keep moving it down. Now, if you were just refilling the stock filters, like I said, it's about 
a quarter cubic foot between the two. And if you buy a bag this big, you're good for three to four uh, fillings. Make sure when you're using resin that you're only buying enough to last you about a year. And the whole tube goes on counterclockwise just to make sure that's seated properly. I kind of like this way better because it makes sure I know that it's seated. So with trial and error, I have figured that the tube doesn't need to be that far outside of the unit. About uh, this much, it seats it perfectly because it, it doesn't go in very far. Uh, so I took a little bit of resin out to give me the two inches that I need from the top of the tube. So that seats in nice. Then we use our tool, make sure it's nice and tight. Here's number two. I think a good rule of thumb is to get it about to the top and then by the time we tap it on the ground a few times it should settle exactly where we want it. Now I'll put the tube in and we'll add any if we need it. Use my mallet just not hitting hard. Let me make sure it's nice and loose so we can get it back there. We're gonna add a little bit of resin because we are a little bit low. The rest of the resin fit perfectly in this uh, two and a half gallon bucket right here. And we'll just seal it up. Instructions say to purge two to three gallons. So we have a two and a half, three gallon bucket right here. So we're just gonna turn on our end. We'll turn the water, you can hear it flowing through. And we're just gonna run. We're getting zero PPM right now. That water's a little cloudy though. Second bucket is much clearer, still a little cloudy. So I'm gonna purge a little more. I'm not going to quite go with the instructions. I think we're going to probably need a good 10 gallons. That is much better. Still cloudy though. See, we're running zero ppm. And that water is nice and clear. So I'm just purging straight from the pressure washer, checking to see if there's any air pockets or if it's having a hard time getting this amount of water out. And it's clear. So, checking our digi flow. So, now we'll turn off DI and we'll just flow straight water to make sure that we're getting the same amount. Same amount of flow. That is exactly what I was doing before, about 950 with this 4.0 nozzle. With the pressure washer running. Zero PPM. So I did my bucket test and I forgot to record it, but we are dead on where we always are right at 2.0 gallons per minute, like 1.99. So it works and it's zero PPM and clear. Awesome. Well, I love it when a modification comes together. This is something I thought about creating myself, but I really didn't want to copy uh, and I wasn't going to improve on it in any way. It was just going to be a different way of doing it, but they had already laid the groundwork and it wasn't that expensive, about 60 bucks for those two. Very easy, very straightforward. We doubled our capacity of resin, which means we should get double the amount of gallons. We should be at 950 to a thousand. Now they say it's even more efficient the way this draws than the way the current one does. So if that's the case, maybe we can get more than a thousand gallons. We'll see. I'm going to reset the timer and then we're going to check back when it gets above zero PPM. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links to RV Mods since they have these great prices. Go ahead and hit them up. I'm not going to try to push anybody else's links, but if you see anything else in the video, any of this stuff here, you can check out my Amazon links below, my Obsessed Garage affiliate link, or my Active Job Site link for the Active V52. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I bought a mon I bought a massive bag. So I picked up this. So I picked up this one cubic. So I picked up this one. So I, so I picked up this one cubic. So I picked up this one cubic foot. The bag of resin heart. Uh, so I have my Digimote. <laughs> so the theory of this is. So the theory behind, so the theory behind the, oh my gosh. And it's small enough of a slot that it won't pull. Oh my gosh, I, I've been spinning it and now it won't. Come on. The closest one that you can find anywhere.